So we've made it this far, and I've talked about a little bit about polypainting and texture mapping, and uh, and the different methods of uh, you know texturing within ZBrush. The next part, what we're going to do is we're just going to start laying down some of the foundational colors on this character. Primarily, what I want to do is I want to start exploring the colors that I'll be using, and try to decide which colors will look good on this character in terms of you know what. Uh, color clothing he should be wearing against the skin and what's going to work. Now for the most part I'm going to be using very earthly colors just to keep things a little bit more simple but I might uh, explore something else maybe for this shirt. Um, you know I haven't exactly decided yet. So before we start painting we're going to have to prepare a few things. One of which is we're going to have to make sure that we are using a standard brush or you know a brush that is usually good to paint with and I, you know in my opinion standard brush works just fine of course when you're painting when you're doing texturing i would also recommend for you guys to go ahead and just go into stroke turn off lazy mouse um you know it's good for the most part when you're doing very smooth brush strokes but sometimes when you're doing um you know just I mean, you're just going over the surface very roughly like this, sometimes it just uh, it starts getting kind of slow and it slows down your entire process and it's just it's sometimes counterintuitive. Of course, when you're painting on a character, you also want to make sure that for a standard brush, your Z add or Z sub is turned off. You might want to just work on RGB instead of MRGB. And of course, you have to make sure that you choose the right material for the job. Now, this character actually what I've done is I've painted in uh, MRGB and I just actually painted in the colors but if I go ahead and I go into the tool sub tool I select for example his shirt and then I start changing the materials what you'll notice is that if I was to choose a, a color now whatever it was you'll notice that because this material is not a perfect gray or any shade of gray what you'll notice is that this color is nowhere to be found on here. And that's because there's a multiplier uh, of whatever colors on here. Uh, and of course that's being multiplied by this, or this is being multiplied by uh, you know this material. And of course what you're getting is uh, a, a, a not exactly a perfect accurate uh, representation of this color. In order to see the exact color on this shirt, what you would have to do is you would have to choose some material that is a perfect gray or perfect white. So in this case, for example, if I chose a flat color material, you'll notice that this color is now, uh, you know, perfectly represented by that. But, you know, we also need something with shading. We can't just work with colors like that. Um, there's times when you can. Of course, when you start getting, once your texture is a little bit more developed, it's fine to uh, you know go in and check how your texture is uh, doing but for the most part what you want is you want to have a material like for example math uh, cap uh, white this one usually works pretty good there is obviously some multiplier as well in terms of shading but for the most part this is a lot you know this is a lot closer to this than using the other material at the same time another good one is sketch shaded too this one's actually even closer as you can see so for the most part, uh, I think I'm just going to use this one. The only thing negative about this material right now is that there is some cavity uh, texturing going on here, or rendering rather. And in order to remove that, and I would highly recommend that you do, um, when you, especially when you choose something like a sketch uh, shaded to material, go into the material menu here, go into cavity detection, just turn it down to zero, or cavity transition down to zero and you're going to get a matte cap material without any of the cavity settings uh, built in. So that's pretty much uh, that. Um, in the next chapter what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start painting using these settings and everything that I've outlined in here. And um, yeah, cheers.